Okay, this demonstration is picking up where a previous one left off. I just registered a raster file to look at it in the GIS, but I want to show you why um, you would go to the trouble of doing that. So I've got a, an image here, a raster image, uh, registered on the map, and it's showing the distribution of fly orchid. And obviously having it in a GIS means that we can look at it with other data. Let's take this stuff off at the moment. I've got a, a, a layer here which is the um, geology of the British Isles, which is coming straight down from a web mapping service from the British Geological Society. I'll take the fly orchid map off for a second and put on the geology map. You can see it there. So I should be able to look at the fly orchid records over my geology map. That would be great. But if I put it on, of course, it obscures the geology map. I can, using the properties of the layer, set it to, to be semi-transparent, and I can get a sense of it there, but there's a better way of doing it actually. Let's put the transparency back down there, which is to make the white areas on the map transparent. And I can do that through this row here. I can say add A definition to this list which will show a colour that is transparent and I'm going to put the code in for the colour white which is red green blue 255 255 255 for each of those values and that will be 100% transparent and once I've added that in you can see that any white areas on that map from the BSBI come out as transparent and so I can now see that over the geology so you can really see the value of having this map uh, this this raster image that I could previously just see on the website in isolation now it's in the GIS and I can view it with any other information I've got there we've got it with the um, geology but I could put for example some OS backdrop on as well and this will show uh, this is taking again data from a web service the OS open data web service available through uh, Adena And there you go. You can see the data with anything. I could put vector layers on and my own biological records and so on. And it really brings that data to life. Now in these last two tutorials you saw how to do this in a kind of longhand way. The really time consuming bit was creating that WLD, that world registration file. But once you've created it for that BSBI um, hectad map for example, that same world file will, will operate with any other hectad map taken down from the BSBI website. And you'll see in the next tutorial how we use the map mashup tool to take advantage of that.